All right, guys. Uh, pretty quick back to back here. I'm gonna tie a bit of a variation of that second fly tied for you guys, where it's a, a marabou tail. This time I'm going to tie the jig leech with that slotted tungsten bead up front, and I'm gonna tie it with a squirrel tail. I know, brand new idea, never seen before. But for the sake of uh, beginners out there and people that haven't tried this before, um, fishing a squirrel tail has insane motion to it. It fishes really good and it gives you that sweet look and the little leech, leech kind of undulation when you're fishing it. So let's get into it. Close up to the uh, finished product there. Sexy little leech on that 60 degree Hannock 480 BO. And like I said in the other video, I'm gonna fish, I prefer fishing these to the balance leeches for a couple reasons. I find that they just swim better. I find that the motion is better when you're twitching that indicator, if it's under an indicator, uh, quite a bit better. And it also, you control it and it actually swims like a leech. If you can picture, uh, trolling a balance leech, it's actually gonna move in that planar motion and not really look like a leech. So this is a good way to circumvent that problem and also fish it under an indicator uh, really well. So let's get to tying it. And just so you guys know, I include in the description all the tying material that I use. I try to keep it fairly simple. I don't try to tie with crazy exotic material or things that you can't find in your local fly shop. Uh, most of this stuff I get from Trout Waters here in town. Some of you have probably seen me there a bunch of times, basically live there. And so for the tail material, here is a piece of black squirrel. And we're gonna tie this in with the long fibers facing down on the back side. I'm don't know if it's hard to see here, but it's that kind of leathery section. And on the top is that those that fur. And again, for this fly, I'm gonna tie with a UTC black thread in 140. A little thicker, a little stronger than that UTC 70, just so I can lock down these materials. I'm not tying any cronies or dry flies, so for the most part, I don't have to use UTC 70. All right. Bring it back down to the shank of the hook, just probably halfway past the point of the hook there. Cut off that tag end thread. And I'm gonna start with tying that whole strip in. I'm gonna tie it facing down, and that means the long fibers facing down. I tie that because when you actually fish the fly, it's gonna be riding like that because of that, the way you tie it and that tungsten bead is gonna flip that fly upside down there, especially if you fish it under the indicator. All right, let's tie that in. Give yourself some room with that material. Tie a little section of it on the shank of the hook. Give it quite a few wraps because you don't want that falling apart. This is the meat and potatoes of the fly here. A little tail. All right, you can see how that comes off the back end nicely. And again, I'm gonna kind of measure the same length of the shank of the hook for the same tail length. I don't wanna make my fly too long. I don't want those trout plucking at the tail and not actually getting those hook sets that everyone wants. And so, I'm just gonna eyeball it. Or you can measure it back over the, the shank of the hook. Either one, if you're new, feel free to take your time. All right, just around there. All right, back to the dubbing twister. Thread the thread through. Give yourself a nice loop, three to four inches. Tie the thread back on there. Give it a whip finish knot at the front. And then rest it back on the thread, thread holder, thread pedestal whatever you want to call it. All right, and again, just like the last fly in the second video there, I'm gonna fish, or I'm gonna tie with the Arizona Simi Seal 
in black and blue. This stuff is awesome. All right, and I'll pull those fibers apart again just so they lay horizontally and they're not bunched up. It's just gonna make a cleaner fly for you. All right. Don't stack in the loop too thick. Try to keep the fly fairly sparse. It's gonna fish better for you. It's gonna catch more fish. All right, just like that. You can see how the fibers are kind of gently in the middle there, keeping that just even. I'm going to pinch the thread with my free hand. For me, it's my left hand. I'm gonna give that dubbing twister several spins. I'm gonna let it, let my free hand go and you're gonna see those fibers just twist in there. A couple more spins just to lock that material in. Grab your beautiful dubbing brush. Brush those fibers out. Get any of the access off of there. All right, and starting at the back of the fly, I'm gonna use my free hand again. I'm gonna wrap that dubbing loop around the fly. Bead sliding away. All the way to the front. And don't worry if you didn't tie enough into your dubbing loop there, or you're too sparse. You can always just do another dubbing loop and continue up the shank of the hook. We're gonna brush those fibers back and forth. Take your thread off the thread stand. Lock that material in. Two or three turns is usually enough. Fourth for good luck. Take your scissors. Cut that thread off. Cut that thread loop. I like to do a couple wraps just to secure it down again. Take your brush. Brush any of those fibers out of there, brush it back and forth, kind of get it going, get it going. All right. And then last step, grab some glue. I like to apply it to the thread and not just the, the fly itself. I find that the finished product looks better. You don't just glue down half the material on your fly if you accidentally put too much glue on. This is a good way just to lock the fly down the thread down to the fly there. So now you got the glue, give it a couple wraps. Grab your wet finisher or use your fingers. Just do a couple twists, finish the knot, and then cut the thread off. All right, perfect. Massage it with your fingers till it looks good. That is the jig leech with that squirrel tail. Looks good. All right, if you got any questions about uh, how to fish this or what applications are best used for this, uh, leave a comment down below and I'll, uh, I'll be happy to answer. All right, thanks for tuning in, bye.